Also, the Order's right about one thing. We are trapped Voidwoken. Am I the lone survivor? Only one way to find out. Lightness in stone is a fool in my book. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Why? But, are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong, or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside, anyway. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. Void Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn. They made it to shore. These bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. The face is familiar. 
What's left of it? He was aboard the ship. spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood red color. Could he be? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hole. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Now then, if there's nothing further... I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but... I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? White, which goes for the dry parts round here too, I imagine. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities, and shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. You do tend to beat around the bush, don't you? Oh, well, that wishy-washy answer will have to do then. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out it goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic and, yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards, then, to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. 
So, without further ado, let us be off. Wisdom in my homeland. How fortuitous. Hey, mister. It's a lot nicer here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them wringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me. Now where should I put this one? One, two, long dead of the crew. Three, four, pretty shells on the shore. Now speak. I am a Alexander. I would not but wait. He's too old. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come. You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Stay silent, you. Bishop Alexander looks up at the sound of your voice, curiosity on his face. Recognition seems to flicker in his eyes for a moment, but then he shakes his head and looks back towards the suffering Atusa. Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop. My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help the Void destroy it. Dallas? Yes, Your Holiness? I believe we're done here. What a waste. Come, we'll be needed elsewhere. <gasps> Spotted something. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. leads.
you walk up to a skeleton unlike any you have ever seen before. His skull seems to be carved into intricate patterns with a gemstone sitting in the middle of his forehead. Approaching, you hear a profane rumble from the undead beast. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation! That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. Oh, yes. An exceptionally common, but exceptionally valuable commodity. A face. A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately, but viciously, rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But, as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunty in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me! And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal! Oh, get away! Monster! Hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts. And you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So, if I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I have important things to do on Reaper's Coast. I cannot simply sit about waiting for the rest of you to die so I may continue my business in peace. No, I may be an Eternal, but my patience has its limits. Indeed, I may be the only Eternal. My people seem rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others... Well... There is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner, and the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm. Or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off.
Did you see them? You did, right? Those claws. Wonder what's behind the masks, too. Can't be pretty. The Geists, dummy. The Hammer and Alexandra had two in tow just a moment ago. Ugh. Thought you lot would be interested in a thing like that. Got that right. It's a new dawn and a new order. Out with Source, out with Void, and in with the days of Dallas. Hurrah! Now, why don't you move along and settle in? A Magister will come and find you when they're ready for you. Could be a while, though. We're up to our hoods in Sinners these days. Did you see them, sir? Bishop Alexander and the Hammer herself, they, they, they were so close, almost within arm's reach. They were just there, just there but a moment ago. Disgusting, just like all your kind. Disgusting like theft? Disgusting like threats? Come on, God. old man. Were you quick I can't wait all this day. Paint that hard, Lexi. Just hand over the gold. This is not your business, Long Pig. Don't let this moss muncher talk to you like that. Especially a cheap skate like this one. Griff already knows she don't like to pay her fair share. Pay up, Elf. No one shorts Griff. Especially not one of you. Everyone in camp's got to contribute. For food, for protection. No exceptions, especially not for elves. Griff's orders. Food? Protection? I have neither. Runs the kitchen. Means he runs me, you, and everyone else in camp. You two ought to be thanking your lucky gods it's us, and not the magisters enforcing round here. A fool never knows what they've got till it's well and gone. Now come on, Elf. If you make me say it again, it's gonna be... We got a system. And it looks like you... don't want to fit in. Follow me, before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place.
reprieve from the din outside. Thank you for your help with that, thug. Rare is the human who goes against their own for an elf. She bows. It gives me great pain. I'm with my family. We are making beautiful magic. We are healing a tree cut down with great violence. The Magister's come. My family runs, but... I fall. My son looks back. I shout to him to run. I am taken. In this cave, we trust Sahela. She is young, but she sees. She knows more than we know. In the camp, the brute Griff rules. He who gives the bread has the power. I hear of no escapes. The only way out is through. Through the Magisters, through their cure. Thugs, I can stand, but oh, I fear the Magisters. Wait, before you go, I am not here without your help. I do not forget this. For you, a prize. I save it for a special occasion, but I can think of no finer occasion than this. Thank you. <laughs>